the art of the possible there and um, it's really going to change the way um, we, we build solutions moving forward. So uh, without further uh, ado, um, there is a our next session is starting in two minutes. It's with Betim. Yeah. Uh, Betim Bedger. Hello, Betim. Hello. Hello, Betim. I know we're still uh, two minutes uh, yeah, yeah, ahead yeah, yeah. of schedule. Um, so where, where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm from Tehran, Albania, in the awesome. Balkans, Europe. And is it is it snowing there yet? What's the weather like? No, it's not. Uh, Tehran is uh, not so cold, but uh, w we have uh, places that are cold because, like, my, my wife is from uh, southeast of Albania, and there is, uh, it snows a lot, let's say, but not yet. Usually it's not a lot. Awesome. And uh, what time is it there, by the way? Uh, it's 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay, so you're, you're, you're one hour ahead. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. Cent you're Central Eastern time, I'm guessing, yeah? C Central European time, sorry. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. So, um, right. So, as you've all been noticing, that there's a common theme with, with all the sessions we've been doing today, and we kind of we kind of timed everything perfectly almost uh, in terms of each, each uh, you know, w to, to where to place what. And uh, now we've come nicely into um, the, the unit testing aspect. So um, we, we've cut, we covered debugging earlier on uh, with um, uh, Benedict um, and then querying and the plugin uh, development. Um, what we didn't cover as part of the plugin development was the unit tests. And uh, um, since the inception of 365 Saturday, um, <clears throat> unit testing was, was was the key thing that we were pushing, really. Um, unit testing was, was was an important thing that our objective was to to improve the code quality. Um, and so it's a great pleasure to invite you today, uh, Betim, uh, to cover that topic Thank as part of the Dataverse Summit. OK, well, we are on the hour. Um, so, uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I will start with, with my presentation. Um, I've got a little bit of slides, but mostly we will do a live demo, let's say, with uh, how to write the unit tests. So, I'm Betim Bea from Albania, and uh, I've been working with the business application since uh, June 2018. And for the last year, a little bit more, I've been acting as an independent contractor. And I've been working full time, let's say, as a full stack .NET developer since May of 2015. And uh, before that, I, I was studying and uh, I started working with project based work because of the studies. So it was part time since 2003. And I've been I've started with Visual Basic six active server pages, pre .NET, <laughs> and JavaScript. So this is where I started. Now uh, I am more focused on uh, business applications, and uh, that's what we are going to talk about today. No. So my main focus is to deliver with quality and with, with confidence. So the the test driven uh, development is the main main uh, let's say main main focus if you want to deliver with confidence because uh, you you can create a lot of tests which uh, help let's say but we will talk uh, about that a little bit later. And then uh, after I will start uh, with a de live demo, I will create the plugin project. I will create the test for that plugin and I will create a custom workflow action project, then create the test for that too. And uh, in the end, I will create a, a project with a, a package that I wrote in a, a MS build, let's say which uh, auto generates the coverage using report generator and other libraries but uh, the thing is that it's uh, ze zero configuration no? uh, you install the package and then you get the uh, uh, unit test coverage report so test driven development the first thing is the why no 
you have to deliver with more confidence so you have to test uh, you can raise your hand if you ever de uh, deploy the plugin and then you got another reference exception of me <laughs> and then to avoid some of the most common bugs let's say you can write some tests and then you can write your uh, most of the requirements can be easily mapped to unit tests so you can validate and you can measure if uh, those requirements are, uh, are uh, let's say, fulfilled uh, each time. E even you are protected from uh, regressions because uh, uh, most of the time you get new requirements and you change some code that you wrote six months ago. And then there is a huge risk to do some regressions on the previous requirements which is something that unit tests have help a lot with uh, then tests can be run continuously in an integration pipeline so you can make sure that uh, each time you build with the continuous integration uh, every test is run and uh, you still meet those requirements uh, and as i wrote there it's the best type of documentation for us developers because usually most of the developers don't like writing uh, documentation so at least you can write the test and it's uh, a big start let's say then uh, in the dynamics world it's a little bit difficult because uh, it was at least a little bit difficult because you have to uh, when when you have dependencies which are calls to apis or databases you need to uh, replace those dependencies with something more lightweight and uh, with something that uh, responds let's say to your uh, use case because you want to test specific use cases on your plugin or on your code so you separate it in uh, small units and you test each unit uh, locally and seven years ago uh, Jordi created the take XRM easy library which uh, as I wrote there to the rescue because it really really helps a lot with uh, ensuring quality and uh, what I usually do uh, and I think everyone should do when we use the uh, open source libraries because fake XRM is this open source is we should uh, somehow give something back to the creators no and it it ha it shouldn't be money no it uh, it can be money but it it has to be at least some thank yous and this is what I usually do no I from time to time I write to the creators and I, I wrote this message to Jordi and there's the date too so I thanked him uh, in private it was not in public I usually do it in public too uh, when a uh, fake XRM easy helps me from some regressions for example I, I tweet about it so this is something I uh, I ask everyone to do because it uh, it's free, no. But it means a lot to the creators, and w it means a lot to me too. Because uh, other than sending thank yous, I'm helping with uh, maintaining the library and giving a hand to Jordi. And this is from uh, the fake XRM repository. Uh, I'm the second contributor and uh, I have a lot more pull requests to be approved and Jordi will talk about that uh, later on so I will not uh, talk too much about the theory or uh, the uh, ideas behind that but I'm going to go straight ahead in a demo so we can see how easy it is to set up everything and to uh, start coding so let me just open visual studio and I did something okay 
I have uh, to do with uh, some <laughs> some requirements that I just put on Microsoft to do. So what we need to do now, uh, we want to create a project for our plugins. So we can, uh, let's say, fulfill those requirements in our uh, Dataverse implementation. So I'll go ahead and create a new project. Uh, if you follow me on the on github let's say uh, i've created a lot of uh, different types of projects and one of the projects is the templates for dynamics uh, so i'm going to use the template to create the the plugin i'm going to call the solution uh, dataverse summit And I'm just going to call my project without a number, Albanian XRM plugins. Uh, I'm using the Albanian XRM nickname, let's say, in the open source world. Um, so I'm, I'll go ahead and just create my project. So what the template does is uh, it creates a, a project for the plugins and it has, it has already referenced the uh, SDK for the dynamics and that has already set to false, let's say the copy local and has already signed the assembly so it's ready to be published in the dynamics almost because we have to write the plugin and it has the plugin base which uh, helps help, helps a lot to maintain this uh, a small code for your plugins because you most of the logic is being reused no? so uh, what i want to create uh, for for this uh, is uh, some plugins to validate uh, the, uh, the data when we create accounts so we can validate the uh, fulfill these requirements so the account should have a name and must have the primary name uh, primary contact specified uh, all these requirements uh, will be validated or enforced on in our plugins so uh, I will use the early early bound for the data model because it helps a lot with unit testing and it helps a lot with uh, writing your code with confidence. Uh, during my presentation, I will not open, not even once, uh, my Dynamics instance. So just to, to show you how easy it is uh, so uh, the, the data model i want to copy it from the C from here because i already have something prepared but we can generate uh, i i copied it but we can generate our early bound models where with tools that we can find on XRM toolbox, no? Uh, I've created an alternative, let's say, to early bound generator, but uh, I did that only because uh, I wanted to experiment something and to implement something uh, way faster. Because uh, one of the main problems that I had in a project was that we had uh, tables with uh, more than 300 uh, columns. Uh, we had a lot of those, but we were using only 10 to 20 columns in our plugin logic. So uh, we were limited to not using the early bound because the, we had a lot of code that was uh, being generated that we didn't need. And it has like uh, uh, this option here, cache metadata, that uh, uses the metadata that I have in uh, XRM toolbox to generate the model so if i click generate it will finish like in an instant and there are other options too that uh, 
early bound generator doesn't have. For example, uh, I don't usually use the service context to write my queries. So I did an option to remove the property change uh, events because uh, the only need for the use for those is to use the link you driver no, for the service context. Since I don't need those, uh, I can remove them from my generated code and it is a little bit faster and smaller in size. So this is what uh, data I generated. I selected only a subset, so it's only 360 lines of code. And this is the configuration that I saved for what selection I did in my uh, early bound uh, for Albanian early bound. Sorry. So let's go ahead. Uh, I will use uh, some structure to my plugins, but uh, it's not the standard that I use usually. It's only something that I use to make the demos because uh, the structure that I use usually depends on the project. Uh, most of the projects I, uh, I worked on were already started, so I had to adapt. And I only change things when those are wrong. So I, we have to write some account plugins and we want to write uh, some logic on our create message and we will start with the validation so I'm going to create a create validation folder and I'm going to create a plugin I'm going to call it uh, ensure has contact but it's uh, it's not in the naming convention that I use usually, as I said before. Uh, so, uh, usually I try to, I like to change the namespace. So it is uh, shorter and it gives a little bit of meaning because uh, I'm not interested in what assembly my plugins are, but I'm, I like to use the namespace to uh, specify which plugin I'm acting on. Uh, I have to make this public and I have to extend the plugin base. And you, you get a uh, pretty similar template with a, a new, let's say, feature of uh, of the CLI of power apps now when you write uh, pack in it uh, plugin in it sorry but uh, it doesn't uh, sign your assembly and I have created this <laughs> template so before that so it's the one that I use but uh, it works like a, any other template and I will leave this in this way and now I will go and implement our uh, test. So I'm going to add a folder here test. and I will add the test project for this plugin. So a new project. It's a simple uh, test project. It's a simple flash library and we bring in uh, it's best to use the convention like test, for example, for your test projects. Uh, you can use anything you want, but if you use test in the package that I will show later, it, it is uh, it auto configure auto configures your uh, test coverage. So. But it's configurable. If you use another convention that doesn't uh, match with the one that I implemented with the zero configuration, you can override that and uh, specify your test name. Um, 
So what we need to do in our test uh, project, we need to install PackageRemEasy as a NuGet uh, package. PackageRemEasy. Uh, it has several packages. Since I am creating a plugin for the online version of Dataverse, I have to use the version 9. If uh, you want to create a plugin for an on-premise version for 365, there is a package even for that to test your plugins. Or if it's even, uh, let's say, older, then you can find packages for each version of the CRM. So I'm going to install this. And I will use XUnit as a test framework but uh, it's not, not not opinionated in that uh, take XRM easy. You can use whatever framework you're confident with. And uh, I will use XUnit for two reasons, because the tests in fake XRM easy are written with uh, XUnit and because uh, the package that I created for the coverage uh, use a six X unit in for the zero configuration. Otherwise, you have to do something else. So uh, X unit. Install this. And X unit runner. I'm going to reference my plugins, let's say project in my test project. And uh, we can start uh, writing the test for our plugins. Uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, uh, upgrade easily in the new version of PKXRM Easy, which uh, Jordi will talk about. Uh, we need to use some uh, test test based class, so it will be easier. I will copy it from another file. So I'll just rename this in PKXRM Easy Test Base. I have a capital A, K, yes, and I'll just copy and paste this. So the idea is that you create a test base for the things that you use most in your test. So it's easier to, and cleaner, let's say, so you don't have to instantiate your fake context every time for the fake XRM easy test. And I need uh, for at this point, I still don't have any test written in my uh, test library. So in my test project, I will go ahead and create a similar structure to what I created for my plugins. So we have uh, it's it's easier to navigate, let's say. So I need to match the name of the plugin that I'm testing just as a convention, but it's not a requirement. And I add tests, let's see. So this has to be public, so it can be executed. And then as we said before, we need to uh, we need to specify the test base. So I will clean up the namespace because otherwise it's a little bit longer. And I will uh, I will rename. Uh, I will make this extend the test test base. 
And in uh, XUnit to write uh, a test, you just mark some me public method with a uh, fact. So just using XUnit. So this is public void. So what was our first requirement? Let's say um, we can go ahead and uh, write a test that uh, verifies that uh, all, all accounts to be created must have a primary contact. So I'll go ahead and create uh, this method. I will uh, call this method uh, uh, account should have uh, so I have my test and to do test driven development we should use the uh, gr green light red light no <laughs> nothing related to series and my test is passing because it doesn't do anything no but I have written a test uh, what we need to do now is to uh, call this uh, let's say we need to call this plugin so we can make sure uh, that we validate what we are what was our requirement and uh, to, to do this we can uh, try and uh, use our uh plugin context so we can just uh uh let's let's start this way so this is our fake context the fake xr uh and what we want to do is execute the plugin with and we need to specify which plugin ensure has contact and we can uh I'm using the shortcuts to uh, fill the usings. Uh, so this way we are executing our plugin. I haven't modified the default context, let's say, of the execution. But uh, what we can do right now is uh, run our test and we can see that the test should fail. And uh, it fails because it says uh, it's not implemented because that's what we had uh, in our project. And uh, so let's go ahead and try and implement something about this plugin. So uh, what I like to do usually is uh, use the constants for each message that I want to show from my, my plugin. So in the body of my plugin, in the execute method, I have uh, almost zero literal strings. And you will see the reason for that in a minute. So this will be the error message. Must have a primary time primary contact. Okay. Contact. So this will be my error message, and instead of throwing this, I will throw a, a new invalid. Okay. Exception. And I will throw this 
So if I run my test right now, it it is failing, but it is failing because uh, I haven't written any test. No, I'm throwing the right exception, but I'm not uh, asserting anything in my plugin. So to do that, I will record this exception. So I will create an, a variable to save it. And this is what XUnit gives you. So you can execute this function in a Lambda expression. And it records the thrown exception. And in my test, I want to uh, assert my exception to be not null because i'm expecting something to be thrown and i want to assert that the type of this to be invalid uh, plugin execution execution And I, uh, what I'm expecting is that uh, it, it should have a primary contact. So equals. Um, uh, now we can understand why I like to have my messages in my plugin. So I can use, reuse it uh, like this. So exception. The, this way I have two benefits. No, I don't have to write the same text. Uh, if it is a long text, then it's a little bit uh, difficult to write the same one. It takes more time. And the other benefit is that if I, I need to change the, slightly change my text, my output text, then uh, all the tests that don't exactly depend on what is written in those, in that text, but that need to validate that uh, something is thrown or something is returned, uh, keep passing because we are changing the test with uh, the text. So if I run my test now, it should pass. We had another requirement. Uh, the other requirement was that all accounts should have a name. So uh, we can write another test about that. Okay. And as before, I'm going to uh, create, um, I'm going to uh, go a little bit a step further because uh, uh, we have to, I, I didn't specify the account here, no? Uh, we haven't implemented the logic in the plugin yet. We just are throwing that all, ac all accounts must have contact. So, I'm, um, I will go ahead and uh, write another test, but I will specify the context. So the target enti uh, entity, the target record that it's acting, the plugin is acting on. And let me just create a new account. account equals and I'm using the early bound, so It is a little bit easier. I don't need to open my dataverse, so I don't need to know by memory each uh, column because I have a lot of help from the compiler.
and so this this is my account what i need to do now is like uh, i can create let's say even a primary contact i can specify it comma here primary contact id and create a new entity So I'm going to use the entity logical name and I'm just going to use a random identifier for our contact because it's not part of our uh, test. Now what uh, I need to do is to specify the target. So I'm going to uh, generate, let's say, a, a default context for our plugin. And this is something that Take Actor and Easy helps us with. And I'm going to specify our input parameters. So we can use our target. And in our in my plugin bit. I have the constant for the target already prepared because it's one of the most used uh, constants and I can call this account so uh, as before the thing that I need to do is to uh, since I'm, I'm testing a, a requirement the validation that all accounts should have a name uh, I expect something wrong to, uh, something to go wrong uh, so I need to record the exception and execute plugin with ensure has contact and now I will specify which context I want my, with my plugin so it has in the target it has the account see something okay and as before I need to test for the error message I'll just copy paste it from up there and then I'll I need to add a new message no because oops that's it uh must have name so i'll just put a message here must have a name and what i will expect from my must should have a name is uh is this one and if i run my test uh I will have a failing test and I'm having a failing test here because my implementation is just throw for, for each create throw this error and I'll try to go a little bit faster because time is going on so uh, what I need to do is to get my target record so I'll go in the context and I'll get the target I want it uh, early bound so I will specify account and then this is just some shortcut that I implemented with the template and you can go and see the implementations in the plugin base but we're not going to talk too much about that and what usually what i like to do is like uh this gives you now if it's not uh, populated so i'll just throw 
a neural valid identification exception. Um, now I, I need to throw some message because the target is missing, but uh, I like to put global messages in a, in another class. So target Now here I can throw the messages. Target missing. Now that I have my account, I can go ahead and check must have name. So I implemented a new check. No? for my, uh, now if I run my test, the failing test should pass. But I'm having another failing test because I didn't, uh, I didn't specify my context here. So even this one is having a missing name. So what I have to go ahead and uh, create the account and uh, plug in context as before. And here we are, we, we want to test that it should have a primary contact so we can fill the name property. And if we run the tests again, Uh, I didn't specify the target or plug in contact. And this is where your tests help a lot now because uh, for each thing that you forget to configure, uh, you probably will have something, a test fail or something that helps you remember that you should configure something else. So we fulfill this that account should have a name and for the moment we have that uh, uh, each account should have a primary contact passing to but it's not uh, implemented in the right way uh, for I will just implement it so we can uh, go a little bit faster uh, and not, not write a test about this. And if we have time at the end, I can go ahead and write a test to check about this. So account the primary contact ID, if it is empty, then I will throw this error. Now it is implemented in the right way. And what I uh, wanted to, to do next is to add another, uh, another feature, another plugin, let's say, to validate. So we validated this one too. And we want to, uh, uh, to fulfill this requirement too. So when we create an account, we should set the primary contact's parent account. Uh, but First, I will go ahead with those other two requirements. Uh, I need the ability to greet users on Teams, but I need some custom action. So each uh, citizen developer, the old ones, the ones that create workflows, <laughs> uh, 
not the new ones in the flow, but the <laughs> can create a workflow and use a workflow set, let's say a custom workflow action that uh, communicates with teams. I will not implement that, but I will uh, add a new project. Uh, uh, new project. And I will use the workflow template and I will just call it Albanian XRM workflows. So now we have uh, we have another uh, project which is uh, structured in a pretty similar way to our plugins, but here we will implement our workflows. And I have a workflow base which is uh, a lot similar to our plugin base, but it has something more. Now I will create the workflow. Uh, which I want to call uh, greet, greet user. A real implementation of this should, uh, when used, let's say, and when you pass the ID, uh, external ID in Teams, let's say, it, uh, I, I put a requirement that it should be an integer, even though it isn't. But um, when used, it should call Teams and greet and uh, tell you if the user was online or not at the moment of the greeting. So I'll do the greet user and I will extend the workflow base. As you can see, uh, this is uh, pretty much similar to my plugin. Uh, now I will add the test tool. Okay, new project, test library. As before, I have to manage the new get packages, install fake XRM easy. My internet is not that fast at the moment because I'm sharing and I'm going to install it soon. So if I go in my and I, I need to copy paste the test base in my workflow. Uh, and I will rename this to user greeter, greet user, what was the naming convention that I use, greet user. And this will extend the test base. Okay. So, uh, what test uh, should I do for this? I have two requirements that the ID must be positive and that uh, I have to greet them. Uh, we can test the IDs must be positive. So, I'll, I'll just write a test for that, public void. Uh, user ID, uh, and I need the fact attribute. So I need, um, I need to execute a workflow. I need the input and output of the workflow. So I haven't specified nothing yet. I'll go ahead and specify an in argument. 
of type integer which I will call user ID and I uh, will just leave it like this for the moment so I'll go I'll go back to my test and I want to specify the input for my uh, for my workflow action so the inputs in fake XLME they are a dictionary of string objects and I want to specify the user ID that I just created name of uh, I haven't referenced my project yet okay was it not public if I deployed this if I had deployed this it was not public so it wouldn't have worked no so you get some sort of validation with this so I'll specify it as zero and I will, uh, I expect an exception. Exception equals import exception. So what I'm, I want to do now is to execute a code activity, which uh, code activity is a Greek user, and. It, it requires the inputs uh, to be specified so I just did that and I want to observe my exception not now so uh, I need to write the message to specify the so I can validate it throwing the right error message so public const um, and I will check for that error I'm going to run my test It is not throwing that error because I haven't implemented anything yet. Method or operation not implemented. I can go to my class user and implement this. So first I need to read the user ID and I have some extension, let's say in my context to make it uh, pretty similar to a plugin. So I can write like this equals context dot arguments dot get value from user id and if you are curious you can go and uh, check my github where this template is on how it works and i will post the code uh, the source code of this yeah, to github later on so you can check it there and I'll you add my validation here uh,
and use my constant there. So no no string literals allow allowed in this <laughs> part of the code. And if I run my test, it should pass. So now I'm going ahead and show the test coverage because I see that I'm short on time. So I'm going to add a new dummy project. Uh, and you notice that I called it a dummy project because it will have no code in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write this build. This is the package that I have created that does some uh, strange stuff, let's say, with MS build. Uh, so it auto configures the output for the, the, the input for the report generator so you can generate the test coverage. Uh, now I installed it. Uh, what I can do is uh, I, I have to add the references to the project. So I install the package and reference my test projects in this project. And the package will auto configure uh, the, the input necessary for uh, Reaper generator. So if I build it, you can uh, see that it's running the unit test with uh, X unit, and after that it will just write a report uh, which it will load here, and I'm going to open it on a Chrome window. You just okay. So now, uh, without doing anything, I just installed my package and then we have the code coverage for our uh, plugins and our workflows. And uh, that's, uh, I see that I'm really short on time. I'm going to have some minutes for questions, so I will uh turn to my slide and then open teams to see if there are any questions uh, okay uh, i don't hear if there are any questions no no one's talking Uh, okay, example with retrieve. Uh, yeah. hey, jo Jordi, we I had some questions, but I think so. Jordi covered yeah, the yeah, answers, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, why, why did you not use unit test or end test project types, and why did you create the project with the class library? Yeah, it was just to show that it's pretty easy it's not uh, because when you go with a test template you get the ms test framework no usually right. so i wanted to use the xunit and i went with the short way just create a, a class library and add the necessary new bits so i don't know if there are other questions other than the registration of this <laughs> because I see there are a lot of registration require requests that uh, and Jordi did a pretty good job in answering everyone okay thank thank you Betim yes that was a really good demo that really was you stepped through very nice and slow and you really took your time explaining everything so that was really good. Um, I know there's there's some other kind of more advanced scenarios um, as well. 
some more um, different scenarios that, that yeah, could, could also be covered. Yeah, mentioned in the beginning, no? there are like uh, more than uh, 1800, uh, 1800 uh, tests in fake XRM easy in the repository that validate what uh, the framework does so you can go ahead and uh, look into those because there are pretty much everything that fake xrm easy offers is unit tested with fake xrm easy excellent yeah. and uh, there will be a session later to follow up on that with geordie as well yeah. isn't there yeah excellent yeah. so i think one of the things that geordie is also going to share is um some of the um, different sam test samples uh, and, and repos that he has available for those different scenarios. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Look, Betim, that was really good. That was ex especially good for those who are just getting used to uh, getting started as well with, with the unit test. That's exactly what the community needed. So once again, thank you, yeah, Betim. That was, that was my really main good. idea, no? to show that it's pretty simple to start. And... Excellent, Betim. Thank you so much. Take care.